Welcome to Life Worship Center. We are a Pentecostal church that is passionate about Jesus. Now, as a church, our mission is to always be reaching. We want to be reaching up to find intimacy with God. We want to be reaching in to find unity with God's people. And we want to be reaching out for the world that God loves. Now, I pray that you'll join right in with us from home today and worship the Lord with us in spirit and in truth. I'm so excited to bring to you an encouraging and an uplifting message from the Word of God today. Thanks again for joining us, and let's go live at Life Worship Center. We have been talking about trusting the Lord, placing our trust in the Lord. We could go all year on this theme because the Bible is so full of this topic. But I want to spend at least a couple more weeks on this. I want to remind you that we've been setting aside time aside for prayer and for fasting. Prasting, I don't know what that is. <laughs> prayer and fasting uh, through January the 26th. Uh, if you have not yet uh, participated, pick a day, pick two days, pick three days, whatever the Lord leads you to do and fast. Let go of some things that you normally do and take some time to spend with the Lord. God will change you. It won't change Him, but it will change you. God will work through it. Also, next Sunday, we will be bringing our first fruit offerings. And unless the Lord changes my mind, I will talk about first fruits. Uh, this is our opportunity at the beginning of the year that we're just going to give an offering to the Lord. There is no pressure on you. There is no guilt on you. There is no shame on you. Because if I did that, I would take away your opportunity to be able to give in freedom and liberty and receive God's blessing. So it is you. It is between you and God to ask, what would you like for me to do? What would you like for our family to do? I'll be praying for God to lead us in what the, the church should do. And so we just want to designate an offering to the Lord and say we're going to trust you with this year when it comes to the finances of the church, the finances of our families, whatever it may be, we're going to trust you. So that is next Sunday. I just wanted to remind you about that. But today I want to start off by reading the verse we've read every week this year so far, and it is out of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. And it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Today I want to focus on trusting in the Lord's provision. Can you say provision? Say provision. Sounds like there's some vision in provision, doesn't it? Trusting in the Lord's provision. And the text I want to read to you today and then pray is out of Genesis chapter 22. If you've been reading through the Bible with us, you've already come to this passage. Genesis chapter 22. And this is what it says. Then, the, then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning. What an awesome God you are. Lord, we have felt your presence during worship today. And God, we know that you're here whether we feel you or not. We know you're here, but your presence is so amazing. Your presence is a blessing. Your presence helps us and encourages us. So I pray, God, that you would continue to pour out your presence and Holy Spirit in this place today. I thank you, God, for your anointing that is upon our lives, Lord, to speak and preach and teach the gospel, all of us, to be witnesses for you. God, today I pray specifically for those that need provision in their lives. God, that they would trust in You. Lord, that they would hear the words and that Your Word would encourage and inspire and grow their faith. And God, that they'd trust in You for their provision. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Trust in the Lord's provision. 
I believe that it is God's desire, I know that it is God's desire for us today to let go of fear and anxiety and worry when it comes to His provision. I believe there are people here today that need a financial provision. I believe there are people here today that need a provision when it comes to a job or any other kind of resources. I believe there's people here today that need provision in their family. I believe there's people here today that need provision when it comes to grace. And I just... The Lord will provide. I believe He's going to show you that through His Word today. And so I pray that as I speak today, that God's provision would just settle on your heart. Did you hear the songs today of how He goes before you? Before you ever even knew there needed to be a fight, that He's gone before you and He's fought your battles? That is the provision of the Lord. And so I just want His provision to settle on our hearts. Will you say it with me? Say, Lord, let Your provision settle on my heart. Before I see it, before I feel it, let it settle deep inside of me so that I can stand in faith and declare that the Lord will provide. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I believe whatever you need today, the Lord is saying, trust me, I will provide. Now, first off, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. There's a lot of words that you read in your Bible that the, the, the actual word in Greek or Hebrew is deeper than what our English language goes. Sometimes our English language does not go as deep as it needs to go to really make sense of some of the words that we read. For instance, when you see the word love in the Bible, it could be like five different types of love. And so if we just have one English word that means love, sometimes we can lose the meaning of that. And so I want to just show you when it says God will provide, the Lord will provide, or Jehovah Jireh, I want you to know that's deeper than what our English. In other words, we would take it to mean that just means that God says, I'm going to give you the goods. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to provide. But it's deeper than that. The word there actually is richer and it means the God who sees is the God who will provide. So I want you to think about that just for a minute. So when Abraham calls God Jehovah Jireh, he's saying, you see and know the need that is in me, and you make provision for it. You see, you can come up to me and you can say, Pastor, i got a need in my life. And you can even begin to tell it to me. But I'm not in your shoes. and I don't have the same feelings not in my heart that's in your heart. And I haven't been through the turmoil that you've been through. And I haven't been through the stressing and the anxious and the moments of waiting and, and, and the confusion. I've been through any of that. And so I can pray with you and agree with you. But what God wants you to know is that He's the God who sees. He sees straight into the heart of your problem. And He has seen the progression of it. And how deep you've gone into that need. And I want you to know He is the God who sees your need. And He is the God who will make provision for the need. Can I get an amen for that? I don't normally ask for amens. But give me one right there. God sees your need. And God provides the need. Amen. Matthew 6. Verse 7 and 8, Jesus says, When you pray, don't use vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think they will be heard for their many words. Therefore do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. He's the God who sees. He's the God who provides. If His eye is on the sparrow, I know He's watching me. If He can clothe the lilies of the field, then I know that He can take care of the needs that are in my life. He's the God who sees and the God who provides. Now, let's walk through this. 
Because provision doesn't always come from where you are looking. Doesn't always come from where you're looking. Sometimes provision comes in a miraculous way. I mean, something you weren't even expecting, provision can come that way. I'm reminded of some passages in the Bible. Elijah, in the time of the drought, he was going where the Lord was leading him to go. The Bible says that God sent a raven, and the raven came and brought food to Elijah and sustained him during the time of drought. That was a miracle of God to provide for his life. We know that Israel, as they wandered through the wilderness, that God rained down manna from heaven. That's a miracle from God. Amen? He just rained down manna. It never happened before. Didn't know anything about that. God just did it. And God sent quail into their camp so that they would have meat to eat. Sometimes God does. He just works miracles. We know about the widow who, the, as she gave the meal to the prophet to bake a cake, that her meal did not run dry. That she didn't, it didn't empty out. She couldn't get it. Oh, it just kept on supplying and resupplying. And she had plenty of food through the famine. Another story about the lady who uh, was run out of oil. And the prophet said, go and get as many containers. And so she got all kind of containers. And she just pour in, pour in. And the oil never ran out. It just kept on filling up. She'd fill up one and put it down and then take this little... Fill up another, put it down, and the one she was holding was miraculously fed by God, and the oil didn't run dry. That's a miracle. You believe God can still work miracles today? I do. I don't see anywhere where it says He's changed. One time, the disciples needed money for taxes. So Jesus sent them fishing and they found money in a fish's mouth to pay their taxes. That's a miracle. That's just something that you're not looking for that. That You're not expecting that. God just does it. We know in our Bible that Jesus took just a couple fish and some loaves and he fed 5,000 men. Not counting the women and children. So I want you to know that if God needs to perform a miracle in your life or in your situation to bring provision to you, He can do it. He can do it. And we don't need to say that quietly or worry about people thinking we're crazy because the God of miracles is still the God that we serve. He's still the God that we praise and the God that we worship. We worship our Creator and He made us out of the dirt. He framed these worlds, this world and the universe by the words of His mouth. He can speak provision into your life today. Oh, but look, 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 look. Because it doesn't always come where you're looking. Sometimes God won't use a raven or a fish. Sometimes God uses the people around you. See, I think this one, this one we often miss. When God uses people in our lives to bring provision. There was a great famine in the land. And Israel, formerly known as Jacob, all his kids, they were suffering. They were out of food. Out of food. Really, they had no other choice or decision but to go to Egypt. Because they had heard that there was some food in Egypt. See, there's a backstory to this. The backstory to this is that several years before the famine ever hit, the sons of Israel sold their brother Joseph into slavery. And Joseph spent time in slavery and then spent several years in prison before God promoted him And gave him favor with Pharaoh. And God used Joseph to interpret the dreams of Pharaoh. 
that told Pharaoh there's a famine coming so we need to take these years that are really good and we need to store back because there's some years that are coming that are really bad. And God did this through Joseph, gave him wisdom and Joseph became second to, only to Pharaoh in all of Egypt. But because of that, there was plenty of food in Egypt. Here comes Israel. Or here comes the family of Israel. And I think maybe you know the rest of the story. How God used someone to bless so many others. How Benjamin, Judah, Reuben, they never would have thought that the answer to their famine, the answer to their lack, they never thought in a million years that provision would come from someone around them that God had blessed. God will use people in your life to bring you provision. In Genesis 50 verse 20, Joseph says, But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. In order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. Some of the most important resources in your life are people. Some of them you don't like. Some of them you don't care for. Some of them you wouldn't give them the time of day. Some of them you have differing opinions with. And yet God has placed them in your life as a source of provision. It's amazing how God works that way. But now we're really getting weird because God will use your enemies to provide for you. <laughs> it's getting quiet now. He'll use your enemies. What if I told you that there's provision in the camp of your enemy? You see, if you had no enemies, you wouldn't know the Lord like you do. And some of you would know the Lord better if you'd quit cowering down to the enemy. If you'd quit asking God why the enemy's raging and instead allow God to show you He's the Lord who will provide. How many times do we cower down and we avoid the, different, the difficult places in our lives? Not knowing that God wants to use those times to show us something about Him that we don't already know. God will use your enemies. Israel had so many enemies. So many enemies. But every enemy God used to show them something else about Him. In other words, God used their enemy as means of provision. They had an enemy called the Syrians or the Assyrians as you read it in the Bible. God used the Assyrians or the Syrians to show Israel that He was God, not just of the mountains, but He was God in the valley. Had it not been for that enemy, they'd have never received that provision in their life to know that if I'm low, He's with me. And if I'm up there, He's with me. That God is with me. He's not bound by physical location. Nebuchadnezzar was an evil king. I mean, that joker was demon-possessed. Just go back and read it. He was so sure of himself and cocky and full of pride. And just, joker was crazy. But God used Nebuchadnezzar to show his people that if you're walking through the fire, Jesus is going to walk right there with you. But I've never known it. Never would receive that provision in their life. Another crazy dude was Darius. Darius was like back and forth. 
But God used King Darius to show his people that if you have to sleep with the lions, God will shut their mouths and you can have peace in the lion's den. I just want you to see that God uses the enemy to bring, to bring provision into our lives. God used Pharaoh to show the people of God that when there seems to be no way, God makes a way. If God leads you to something, He'll make provision as you're there and as you go through it and as you get to the other side. God used Jericho and its mighty walls to show that praising God will bring the walls down in your life. God used Ahab and Jezebel to show that he is the one true God that will answer by fire and consume the sacrifice. You see what I'm saying? God uses our enemies to bring provision into our lives. And so it brings me to the book of Numbers and a story that you've heard probably countless times. Where Joshua or Moses sent out spies, Joshua and Caleb and ten other guys, to spy out the land that was promised to them. He said, this is your land. Go get it. It's a land flowing milk and honey. And you know the story. They went and they scouted it out and they came back. And ten of those guys said, it's got milk and honey, but it's also got giants. It's got fortification like you've never seen. They will rip us apart. They will tear us to shreds. But I want you to listen to what faith says in Numbers 14 and 9. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Do you hear it? Don't fear the people, for they are our bread. The Lord is with us. Do not fear them. The voice of faith says, if there's an enemy in my life, the enemy will be my bread. The enemy will be my provision. The enemy will promote me. The enemy will bring me the favor of God upon my life. The enemy will show me another side of God that I never knew. The enemy will show another depth of His grace that I never knew. The enemy will show another might and power that I did not know that God possessed. The enemy will show me that my God will provide. He'll use miracles. He'll use people around you. He'll use your enemies. But listen. He'll use you. He'll use you. Don't miss this. God wants to partner with you to be the Lord who will provide. What makes somebody generous? Does anybody know what makes somebody generous? The easy answer is money, right? Money doesn't make people generous. There are people who have very little that are the generous, most generous people you've ever met. There are people that have a lot that are the least generous people you've ever met. So what makes a person generous? May I say, what makes a person generous is trusting in the Lord's provision. If you can trust in God's Provision. You know what it does? It opens up your hands. 
Because you begin to recognize that God is the only source. Everything else is a resource. Our source comes from Him. Trust in the Lord brings generosity into our lives. And don't get, don't get stuck on the offering. We've already given the offering today. I'm not trying to get you to bring a big offering to the Lord. We get stuck on that. Some of you need to be generous in mercy. Some of you need to be more generous in grace. Some of you need to be more generous in forgiveness. It works the same way. How do you become a forgiving person? You trust in the Lord's provision of forgiveness in your own life. And you realize, He's got a bunch of that. I think I can give some away. Your hands open up. Trusting in God's provision brings generosity. So every person here today can become generous. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 says this, Now may He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So let me ask you, who does God give seed to? The sower. Did you hear it? It doesn't mean the more I give, the richer I get. But it means the more that I sow into the lives of others, the more God makes sure that I have some to sow into the lives of others. Because God's got a name, and His name is the Lord will provide. And God can send five billion ravens to feed us all, but you know what He'd rather do? He'd rather use each and every single one of us to represent Jehovah Jireh in this land. So that we walk around with an open hand and realize that God is our source and these are just resources and we become sowers. So if He gives seed to the sower, what does He give seed for? Sowing. I went to Blue Mountain and I got that one. I didn't even need the message Bible for that one. I like it. Will you just, will you close your eyes with me? I'm not quite done, but I'm getting close. Would you take your fist and your hands and just make some really tight fists with them? I mean, tighten them up. Tighten them up. How does that feel? It does hurt a little bit. Feels like you're ready to punch somebody if needed. Now just let them open. Open them up. Now how's that feel? Feels a lot like worship, doesn't it? Feels a lot like worship. God, open our hands. Open our hands. God, open our hands when it comes to our finances. Open our hands when it comes to the fruit of Your Spirit. God, help us to be sowers of love, peace, and joy, kindness, gentleness, meekness, self-control. Give seed to the sowers in this place as they sow the Word. God wants to use you. He wants you to look and see the miracles that He's performed. He wants you to see how He's used other people in your life to bring provision into your life. And He wants you to see how God has used every attack of the enemy 
to bring provision into your life, to increase your faith, to deepen your walk with Him, to make you bolder, more inspired. But He also wants you to recognize that you carry His name. And one of His names is Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. Lastly, sometimes the need is so great. If y'all want to come on up to the music, that'd be great. But the need is so great sometimes that the only one that can meet it it's not a raven. It's not other people. It's not your enemies. It's not even you. Sometimes the need is so great that the only one that can meet it is God Himself. And let's think back just for a minute at our opening text. Abraham. Abraham's a hundred years old. He's done tried to do it himself and mess things all up. But he's held on. He's held on to the promise of God that in my seed will come a nation. From my seed will come a people greater than the stars and the sky and the sands on the beach. From my seed, and I'm a hundred years old, and Sarah, God bless her, she's 90. But conception happens. Just like that. <laughs> happens. God just like, boop, baby. Isaac, a child of promise, is born. Can you imagine? First off, that had to be rough on Sarah 90 years old even though she lived back then 90 was still old she had that baby don't you know I mean y'all know like parents with their first child how protective they are right don't get too close to mama bear if you got sniffling nose you better get out of the room can you imagine how protective Abraham and Sarah must have been? I mean, because, hey, I don't know. Sarah's like, praise God for this miracle, but I ain't doing this again. This ain't happening again. Abraham's all right with it. But Sarah's, no, uh-uh. And they watched this little boy grow up. And he wasn't just a little baby when Abraham took him up that mountain. He was a young man. He's carrying the wood. And so here's Abraham. He didn't dare tell Sarah what God told him to do. Sarah wouldn't have let him out of the house. Sarah probably would have shot him dead. This is my boy. He ain't taking my boy up that mountain. Here's Abraham. He's headed up the mountain. I cannot imagine what's going through his mind. I waited and I had that promise. And I've got this promise. And everybody I see, I say, it's my boy Isaac. He's really mine. He's mine and says, it's a miracle of God. And God says, I want you to give him back to me. I can't imagine what he's thinking. But Abraham is marked by the fact that he believed God. He trusted in the Lord. So he believed. The book of Hebrews gives us more insight on this. That he believed that God could have brought him back. He believed in the promises of God, even if that meant letting go of the miracle that he had prayed for and received, and now he was ready to be willing and obedient. He was ready to be generous with this thing because he trusted in God's provision. And Isaac even asked him going up the mountain in Genesis 22 and 8. He said, Dad, you know, we're here. I see the wood. Where's the sacrifice? Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. Wow. 
So he gets up to the top of the mountain. And he ties Isaac. I don't know what he's saying. As he ties Isaac up. I don't know what he says. How that happens. He ties him up. And he's ready. He's just ready to obey God. I know it's weird. It sounds crazy. But he's ready to just... He knows God spoke to him and he trusts God's provision. He's ready to give back the miracle. And as his hand goes up, the angel of the Lord says, wait. Wait. I want to ask you a question. Do you believe that God knew everything that was going to happen up to that moment? Doesn't that answer the question as why God would ask him to do it? It's almost like God wanted to show us something about this story. It's exactly what it was. God says, I know now you trust me. I know now you open up your hands. I know now that this seed that I promised, I can bless it and it'll be fruitful and it'll be multiplied and all that I've promised you is coming, Abraham. And I want you to look I've provided a substitute for you. You see, there's things in our life that are missing. And some of them can be provided by miracles. Some of them can be provided by others. Some of them can be provided by your enemies. Some of them can be provided by you. But there's one thing that's going to take God Himself to come. And it's our salvation. It's for us to have our sins washed away. I can't give enough to make that happen. I can't get it from somebody else. My enemy sure isn't going to provide that for me. Only God Himself could do that for me. And I want you all to see today that that's exactly what God did. And when we say the Lord will provide, we think more about money. We think more about stuff. We think about things and possessions and jobs and all the other things in this life. But I want you to know what God was talking about more than anything is that the Lord will provide a way for you to have relationship with Him. And that He did. And I love what the Word says about that. That if God gave His Son, how much more will He give us all things. You understand? In the mount of the Lord, it will be provided. Can I ask you to stand with me just for a few moments today? If you've got anxiety, if you've got fear, if you've got confusion in your life about the provision of the Lord, I would love to pray with you. I'm here to pray with you today you've never trusted in the Lord for salvation, if you've never placed your life in His hands, if you've never surrendered to God and believed in Him as the only way to the Father, if you've never done that, I would love to pray with you this morning. So as our praise team sings this song, say, I believe for somebody the dry season is over and there's a cloud and it's ready to rain down the provision of the Lord for your life. If y'all will sing, I'm going to stand right down here. If you just need somebody to pray with you, that's what I'm here for. It was a privilege to have you as our special guest today. Thank you for joining us at Life Worship Center. Now our ministry is supported by the generosity of people just like you. Please consider giving today online by clicking on the link of our website, lifewc.org. Thank you for making a difference in the lives of others. And until next time, God bless.